March this year, it was it was really tricky. I think for all sports, but in in Formula One, we'd already set off to Australia. When we got there, we obviously had heard that there was coronavirus was increasing in, in different countries, but we were confident that we'd still be able to race that weekend. In Italy, nearly 800 people have died. Hundreds more deaths reported the daily. Just will be a pandemic. Describe this as a Great moment of species. national emergency. Three Formula One team members have been put into isolation. News overnight that Formula One team McLaren had pulled out of the race. Obviously, while we were out there, um, one of the teams had a suspected COVID uh, incident in a person caught it. Formula One management got involved and, and in hindsight, which must have been really, really difficult at the time, took the right decision just to pull the whole event. The Australian Formula One Grand Prix has been cancelled. It's a bit of a whirlwind really. Um, we, we'd all arrived there looking forward to the start of a season. You know, we took 30 tonnes of freight to Australia. You've got about 60 to 80 people on the ground. Um, so just to say, sorry, it isn't going to happen, it's, it's a pretty big deal. I was very tired from, from the jet lag of, of travelling out to Australia and you, know, you, you put a lot of time and effort into preparing for that first race. We had a busy schedule of events planned, we had a lot of people coming trackside. But ultimately I wasn't annoyed or angry, I was disappointed because you know, we're all racers, we all want to see our cars go racing and to get all that way and have that, all that dissipation and build up and you work so hard during the, the off season to prepare for that first race. You know, it was it was such a shame, but you know we all understood that you know it was for the right reasons. My first concern was for our people. You know, I, I've got uh, IT personnel who support the race team, but all of our race team staff is really worried for them. Were they going to be okay? Were they going to be able to get home? What was you know, simple things like flights and how, you know how do they stay safe and, and 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 come home? Our mechanics and our hospitality team they swiftly set about dismantling all of our equipment in the garage and in our hospitality unit, putting that back onto the freight boxes. Those that are able to return to our hotel did so straight away, just leaving those guys to pack up. And then less than 24 hours later, we were all on a flight back home to the UK. Yeah, we we were lucky. We managed to get everybody home, which was great and then all the freight came back. But when it came back, the UK had gone into lockdown. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. You can only leave your home for very specific These reasons. stricter rules will force people to social distance. We realised that we were probably going to have to send all of our staff home and they'd have to be able to work from home. And that was going to be a real challenge for us and I think for all Formula One teams. So we had a skeleton crew here and literally we just put the cars in the bays, we put the freight boxes in the in the race bays and uh, everyone went home. It was kind of surreal really. We had probably the capacity for 70 people concurrently to work away from site. And so we had to just rapidly change that uh, and, and make it possible for a thousand people to work remotely and securely, which was, which was the challenge that uh, most businesses faced. For us, it was really about looking at, first and foremost was health and safety of our people. Um, and then following that, it was, it was around how do we keep them productive whilst they're now exclusively working from home. For us, the real priority and one of the key challenges were around people who are typically factory based. So design engineers and, and development and systems engineers were working on very sophisticated software. Now they needed to be able to access that remotely from their, their homes or their remote locations and be able to access it securely as well as um, you know, efficiently. And, and really that was where the Semantic Partnership helped us during this, this time. When lockdown occurred in March timeframe, like with any organisation, cybersecurity priorities completely, completely change. Um, but I have to say, Williams were in a very strong position because um, th th they started right back in the beginning from you know, moving a security posture from uh, endpoint protection and email hygiene, and had already started this journey uh, to moving their data and applications out to the cloud, uh, being quite a mobile workforce when they're at the, at the races. All of the foundations were there, so the semantic team were ready and on hand um, to, to help with the team uh, readjust as we went into lockdown. I joined Williams back in 2014 to help with the digital transformation and by luck maybe, but judgment as well. Part, part of the, those initiatives were collaboration tools, uh, mobility, making it possible for any engineer to work anywhere in the world and have access to the data that they needed. And for many of them, it was completely seamless. 
whether they were sitting at their desk here on site or they had set up an office at home, they were able to work seamlessly on the systems without any of our security protocols getting in the way, stopping them working. We had multi-factor authentication. We had all of the tools and technology that Symantec provide us to help protect the endpoints, the data, uh, the traffic as it's moving across the internet. All of that was protected for us and for our users. So although for, for many of them, they had never worked from home, the culture in Formula One was was you're here, you're on this site every day. Um, they were able to adapt very quickly. It's times like this where the value of the partnership really stands out. We, we've, we've had a long-standing trusted partnership with Symantec. They've helped us already build a very stable and strong foundation of cybersecurity. And so really this has enabled us to act quickly, act efficiently, get, get all of our people in safe environments away from the factory. And, and allow them then to carry on with their work. We were able to take all of our IT equipment home with us and that enabled us to set up our, our desks how we want to and connect to our network here at the factory safely and securely and, and have a seamless transition into then you know, what was going to be at that point you know, a, a long time working from home. We're all getting used to being on Teams and Zoom and all that kind of stuff. I've loved, I've loved the, the calls that we've had with people where their cat uh, appears on camera or, or the child walks into the room. Those are not things, and we've made it clear to our staff, those are not things that they need to worry about and chase everyone out of the room. We're asking you to work from home, uh, you know, and, and you have a home life and, and, and we've accepted that. So there's been a lot of flexibility on both sides from, from the organisation and, and from our staff. Preparing for the, the restart of a new season was a challenge again because there was so much uncertainty about when we would be able to resume races again. Races were being postponed to later in the year, some were being cancelled entirely. When we came back from Australia, we had no idea if we'd get a season in or not. We needed to go racing for the teams to get income. So when we got a marker in the sand that we would be resuming in Austria, that massively helped us to, to plan accordingly. When we first came back, uh, we had about four weeks to prepare. So we had two cars and we had spares to go to Australia, which were unused. Um, but we knew we got a real challenge because going into three races with a week apart, you've got no time to fix anything or repair anything. Although it sounds slightly crazy, we actually completely stripped all the cars and all the systems on them and everything was serviced as though it was brand new uh, because we knew we needed to get through those first three races. And then we also had to get the team ready because um, everyone had been off. Uh, we were having enforced shutdown and then we had a bit of furlough going on as well. Um, so we need to make sure everyone was in good condition. So travelling is a little bit different now um, since we started resuming racing. There's a lot of rules and regulations that the FIA have put in place for everybody's safety. Uh, you know, the FIA, the Formula One group, the teams, uh, the World Health Organization all you know, got together to look at how could you build you know, a protocol that allowed Formula One teams to move between racetracks safely. Social distancing, the mandatory wearing of masks for everybody. Some areas, depending on what you do, you have to wear additional PPE. Everyone who travels to the races has to be tested uh, for COVID-19 approximately every 120 hours, uh, sometimes every 90 hours. And so we have the team come to the factory to be tested. Um, and then we have to wait for the results, and when the results are good, then they all fly out to the, to the event. And then once they're there, everyone stays in the bubble, so we don't mix. We eat together, uh, stay in the same hotel together, we travel together. Um, and so there's, you know, we're trying to minimise any risk for, for contamination with any other team, really. So it's been quite intense for our team, but at the early part of the year, you know, we were worried that we may not be able to go racing at all this year. To actually finally see our two cars going around the track um, was, was fantastic. And ultimately, having Formula 1 races under these conditions is better than having no Formula 1 races. I think when you get a team like Williams that has been around in Formula One since the beginning and, and a company like Symantec that's uh, been there at the beginning of, of cyber security really, you tend to find the two teams when they work together, they really understand you have to keep uh, evolving and changing with the times. Um, so we spent many, many years helping with their cyber security uh, uh, issues and addressing what, what comes ahead of us and it's been a, a great relationship. We're really proud that we've extended the partnership and, uh, and for us that gives us stability. It shows support from a trusted partner that they're with us. They understand the challenges that we face now but also will face in the future as the sport and the way we go racing unfolds.
The future for us, I think, is going to be a hybrid. And so it's still then really important that we're protecting all of our email traffic, that we're protecting every you know, piece of data that we're putting across the internet, uh, whether it's you know, in our collaboration applications, whether it's files that we're transferring, uh, dealing with the, uh, the regulator, the FIA, or we're dealing with a sponsor or a supplier, or you know, we have to make sure that all of those file transfers are, are safe and secure. And all of the cloud estate that we use is protected by semantic endpoint protection. The team has got a fantastic pedigree and great history, but under the current regulations, you know, has has had difficulties, and um, and it's a testament really to everything that's gone on that we're still here and able to do what we do. But what we're looking forward to now is is trying to rebuild that brand, you know, and get back to where the team should be. We we have the people, we have the intellect, and we have the facility to compete, you know, at the other end of Formula One. Yeah, we're up for it. It's, um, it's going to be difficult and challenging, but it is for everybody. But that's what we do, you know. We design Formula One cars and we race them, so uh, that's what we're going to do going forward. Welcome everyone. I'm delighted to uh, have Graham Hackland, CIO of Williams, uh, in the studio today. Graham, it's great. It's great to see you face to face for a change. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a, it's a bit of a, a bit of an odd year uh, that we uh, we have to keep seeing each other digitally. But yes, it's nice. It's nice to actually see you today. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. And it was it, it, we had the documentary we've just seen, and um, I'm really curious to see you know how have things changed. What are things like now uh, in the factory? It, it is very different. You know, we, we, we always had this complete open policy. Someone from the machine shop would go upstairs and talk to a designer uh, and, they'd, and they'd collaborate and they'd go back downstairs and they'd fit something to the car. And that's much more difficult now. And even the operators within the main machine shop and the main machine, uh, you know, that we're, where we're building carbon fiber and metal parts, they're having shields, they're having to wear face masks. We've had to put all these uh, procedures in place to protect them. And it's the, absolutely the right thing to do, but it has meant that there isn't that contact that they used to have where they could just go and collaborate with someone very easily. So so it is different, um, but we're still producing a Formula One car and going racing, which is the most important thing. Uh, definitely. And it, yeah, it's, yeah, I think every organization is faced with these different challenges. And I always think that Williams, you've kind of got, you've got the mobile team out at the racetrack, you've got the factory workers. So a lot of the, a lot of the concepts there, uh, many of our customers are familiar with that and our partners. Yeah. And so design people, you know, who usually, we, we, we deliberately last year put this big open plan office for them all to be able to be near each other, collaborate together. They are all now working uh, away from the site, and and I think sometimes they find that tricky. Creative people like mm. the contact. So, so it's been a bit of a journey, and you know the partnership between Semantic and, and Williams has, has been going for a few years now. And uh, you know, I remember it started off many years ago with uh, endpoint protection, using endpoint protection and email hygiene. And um, uh, you, you know, it's been it's been really interesting. I know Semantic team working with yours on that on that journey and that digital transformation. I mean, what, what can you tell me about about that? that yeah, journey so as you said, we started with endpoint. You know, we were traveling around the world with laptops that had no encryption on them that made me nervous and. Uh, you know, and an, an antivirus that kind of worked, but you know, no firewall, none of the, none of the technology that we get from semantic endpoint protection and from semantic endpoint encryption on our devices. So, so we started there. I felt that was our biggest risk, and uh, and we looked at the risk landscape together and said, you know, what what will our journey look like? This was you know back in 2015 that we started working together. What will our journey look like? And uh, we were talking about moving to the cloud, a lot of our services into the cloud, and there was a lot of nervousness at Williams about putting you know confidential design design, race data in the cloud, uh, you know, back then. And you gave us the confidence to be able to do that, to be able to put a data center in the cloud, protect it just the same way that uh, it was protected, whether it was on premise or, or, or in the cloud or something else on someone else's uh, data center. Uh, and, and that's the way we went. And so now we've got this whole integrated cyber defense platform that really helps us. Another interesting yeah. area I think you've, you've, you've been faced with is, is the mobile workforce and uh, you know, what are your views on mobile devices? Because I know it's been a bit of a journey there on some of the new risks on, on mobile devices and how you've approached protecting those. We, we, we kind of left them till later, <laughs> uh, you know, waiting for the right technology that wasn't going to slow the user down, that wasn't going to affect their ability to do their job because a lot of people moved to a more mobile way of working and we wanted to make sure that it was seamless for them. But it meant that we were 
giving them devices that we had to treat as almost you know as if it was a personal device there, mm. there was no protection on it so last season when we implemented semantic endpoint protection for mobile uh that really helped us actually as we went into the pandemic and people were having to you know work on devices that uh, you know maybe they didn't have to do as much work on in the past so either personal devices or or, or their mobile uh no matter where we go in the on, in the world now, as as we're traveling with the Formula One team, but also no matter where they're working, whether it's at home or at the factory or or, or anywhere else at a, at a customer site, that device is protected. So that was partly luck and judgment in in terms of the timing, but it really works out well for us. Excellent. Yeah, I know the the risk profile is changing dramatically in that in that in that regard. And those I are think, targets, right? So those yeah. devices now are actively being targeted, whereas in the past they'd go after your laptop or try to get into your network. Now those devices, you're, you're caching all your passwords on there, all the apps that you run. A lot of it's got money behind it. People are mixing their, mm. their work and their personal life. So those devices are, are, you know, are very much targeted and I'm, I'm delighted that we've protected them. Absolutely. And, and, and what your view, what, what's your view on, um, on zero trust and that framework? Because you know, you, you've pushed workloads into cloud data, your, your users are mobile. Um, so so what's, your, what's your views on zero trust? So zero trust, I don't use that term internally, right? I don't mm. want my colleagues to feel that when I talk about zero trust, I mean, I don't trust them. So it's never about our people. It's about their identity. So has their account been compromised? That's what I want to know. And obviously, zero trust across the network and devices you know, just makes sense. Uh, there's too many of the, the vendors that we used in the past that uh, everything was open and you had to lock it down. That never made sense to me. Start with a zero trust and enable the things that you need to for an individual to do their job. That made a lot more sense. So I... I absolutely believe in zero trust and, and we've been working together on, mm. on that over the years, but I don't want my, my colleagues at Williams to feel like I don't trust them because we do. They are actually our first line of defense. When they get that weird email or something comes up on their on their device that, that looks odd or they, they got a link that they click on and the login box doesn't look quite right, it's that education piece that we use then to make sure that they don't click on the on the link that they shouldn't because the attack that the attacks that we're seeing right now is you get an email from someone you trust that looks normal, same language that that person always uses. It might even be a reply all to an email that you received from that person, uh, but the link that you click on is taking you somewhere that it shouldn't. And we've worked closely with Semantic on on protecting us from that. As you click on that link, it's going to tell you that this is not content that you actually want to download. So really looking forward on, on to the future, um, both with our, our organizations working together and, uh, you know, there's exciting new times for, for Symantec and, and for Williams as well. Um, so, so how do you see that playing out with Williams? A lot happening right now in your, uh, in your business. Yeah, I mean, Formula One and, and for Williams, and, you know, and the risk landscape is constantly changing. And as we drive more of our uh, services that we offer to our colleagues into the cloud, you're helping us to make sure that that's going to be uh, safe and secure uh, and that we can continue to do that. Um, but for, for the sport, for, for Formula One, all of the teams have now signed up to the Concord Agreement, uh, that, so, which is the, the agreement that governs how the, how the sport is going to run. And that's really important. Uh, and, and for Williams, new investment from new owners. And so it's a really exciting future for us excellent well um graham it's been a pleasure to talk to you today and uh, wish you all the best for the season really look forward to the next year and, and more thank you Clive.